Okay, today we're looking at the sine and cosine with amplitude changes and period changes. The graph, we're going to sketch one graph of y equals 2 sine x, what that 2 does, call that a. Um, the amplitude, amp, I don't know what's wrong with my writing, let me start over there. The amplitude of this graph is going to be 2. And what that means is that from the center line, which is our y equals 0, we're going to have a vertical stretch of the graph. The original sine wave has an amplitude of 1. So it went up to 1 normally, but this one's going to go up to 2. Okay, so I'm going to mark off on the vertical axis negative 1 and negative 2 going down because it will stay between 2 and negative 2. When you discuss amplitude, you discuss it as the difference, um, the, the height above or below the x-axis, and you do it in absolute value. So it's always positive when you're talking about amplitude. Now, the period of the sine wave is 2 pi, the regular sine wave. So let's mark off 2 pi towards the end of our arrow here. Now we're going to practice graphing. So we're going to cut that whole section in half which would be pi. You want to try to estimate this as uh, best as you can. Uh, try to get somewhere accurately between, I mean, if somebody's got that mark over here, that's really not um, putting it halfway at all. Okay, so try to make it even if you can. I'm not going to be counting on it being perfect because mine aren't going to be perfect because I'm not measuring it. All right, so this would be pi. And now we're going to cut that in half because I told you we need to have five key points labeled on all of our graphs. And half of pi would be pi over 2. And that tells me that my x scale, or my x axis scale, is pi over 2. So I'm going 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, and then halfway between pi and 2 pi make a mark, and label that 3 pi over 2. Okay, now we're going to remember that if you were thinking about the um, first quadrant, this point on our unit circle is 1, 0. This point is 0, 1. This point would be negative 1, 0. And this point would be 0, negative 1. If you thought about all those values and you look at the second part of each point, that's the sign of the uh, at that place. So the sign is 0, was 0. That made our graph start at 0, 0. Then at pi over 2, the sine is 1, but we have doubled the sine wave, meaning we would multiplied it by 2. So we're not going to put a point at 1, we're going to put it at 2. Then you're back at sine is 0 at pi. It's negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, but we've got to multiply that by 2, so it's going to be at negative 2 here. <coughs> And then we're back to zero. Now, if you're interested in, um, you do want to stay within these ranges. So if you're kind of, you know, a person who like is a little bit of a perfectionist, you might want to use a ruler because then you could kind of just, or you could dash this line horizontally out just because you're supposed to be staying within this parameter, right? And down here, you are staying within this negative 2 to 2 vertically. And so I'm sticking to staying lined up. Okay, and what I'm going to explain is, well, let's go ahead and graph it. It's curve. Make sure you're curved, not straight little sticks or something. That will get you a very bad score on your graphs. They got to be curved. I don't expect you guys to be perfect, but I expect them to have some look of symmetry a little bit. All right, they should be curved. So what I'm guess my point would be is if I got you going, if you start doing things like this, you know, and that's not going to cut it. Okay, it's going to have to be better than that. You with me? Even I know it's not easy for everybody to graph well, but I do want you to try to be a little bit neat about them because I'll I will take off on the graphing quiz if you don't. Um. All right. So let's move on. We did that one. It's all done. Sketch one complete cycle of y equals one half cosine x. Well, now I've got an amplitude of one half, which means the graph is compressed vertically. Okay, so if this was one, 
and down here was negative one. We're only going halfway, so we're going to mark off at one half and negative one half. Okay, of course, that's where zero is. And you do need, oh, I forgot one thing on my last graph. I'm going to have to go back. And I'll explain why after I put these guidelines in real quick. I didn't plot my, I didn't write my points on my graph, which is not a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to go back for a second. And I forgot to label these points. So this would be at pi over 2, 2. The first one I already had written down was at 0, 0. The third key value is at pi 0. The fourth key point was at 3 pi over 2, negative 2. And the last point we plotted was 2 pi 0. Okay. Those have to be labeled within one cycle. All right, so back to my cosine wave. If I get a little reminder again, you don't just get used to this. You'll start to just memorize what the sine and cosine are at each of these values. But I'm going to go ahead and write these down for the first time. Well, it's actually the second since we graphed all these last week. Um, let's the uh, cosine has a period of two pi. It doesn't repeat within the two pi range, so we're going to write out the two pi. Cut that in half pi half a pi, pi over 2. Our scale again, pi over 2 is your x scale. 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, halfway between here, 3 pi over 2. Okay. Now, the cosine at 0 is 1. So this is, as would be starting at 1 if it were just a plain cosine graph. But it's been cut in half, so it's going to start at 1 half. Then at pi over 2, cosine is zero, 0. Still half of 0 is 0, so that's why it's still right where it was. Cosine at negative at pi is negative 1, but we're taking half that, so we'll be at negative 1 half. Then at 3 pi over 2, it's 0, back to 0, and then up to 1 half at the end here. My dashed line was a little bit crooked there, so I went a little bit above it. Okay, and then sketch the curve. Oof, I missed. Don't like the way my graph started there. All right, so I got, oh well, my pen's acting strange. And I'm not happy with my results, so we'll see. Finally, boom, that's a little bit better. Curved under here. You guys also, you cannot, I don't know what's going on. Oh, my paper slid, that's what happened. Um, I don't want to see, let's see what I was going to say. I've had some students that kind of dent them in the wrong direction. Like they can't go in this way like that, right? They're supposed to go out curve the way I was curving it there. There. All right. So that's a one half cosine X. And it's not that easy for everybody to do. All right, now, we can say that if A is a positive number, then the graphs of Y equals A sine X and Y equals A cosine X will have an amplitude of A. All right, so we're going to graph Y equals 3 cosine X, which means, pardon me, I forgot to darn it. I kept to do that again. So this one's going to be at 0, 1 half. Back here, get the points labeled. Pi over 2, 0. The third one's at pi negative one half, yes? Two pi. The period's two pi. For any sine or cosine graph, it's two pi unless the period changes, and that only changes if you have a number here. Okay? So I'll, that's what we'll be doing next as the period changes. This would be three pi over two zero, and the last one, two pi one half. Okay, now one cycle, we're going to graph again of each of these. So if I got to do y equals 3 cosine x, technically, I mean, I've given you a just stick here, basically, to graph it off. We will provide some graph paper um, on the assignment, but if I had to think about it, 1, 2, and then I'm going all the way up to 3, 
the normal cosine wave would be down here, but this one's going to stretch vertically. This is zero. I'm going to label negative one, negative two, negative three. Cosine again, two pi is the normal period. Split that in half, in half again. X scale, pi over two, one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two. You end up with all the quadrantals on there. Not that you couldn't plot other points, you really could. But these are the nice, easy ones to get the graph um, done the easiest way possible. This is a cosine, so it starts up high, it starts at the max, three. Then it comes to the center line, zero. Then it goes to negative three. Back to the center line at zero. And then up to the max on the last point at three. Okay. All right, so I got my cosine curve. Now I'm going to label my points. 0, 3 is the first one. Pi over 2, 0. Pi negative 3 is the third one. 3 pi over 2, 0 is the fourth. And the last 2 pi, 3. Okay. All right, now we're going to do from 0 to 2 pi, we're going to graph one quarter of the sine of x. So if I have 1 way up here, or all the way, oh, it's kind of, I'm going to try to space it. I made a longer stick down below there than at the top. That would be about negative 1. A quarter of it is going to be a pretty flat graph. So I was just splitting this thing up in the quarters. Negative one fourth. It's going to be a very compressed graph. All right, go out. We're going to stay within these tiny little lines here. So we can show the compression. And I'll go out to my 2 pi because there is told us to graph from 0 to 2 pi. That's what this stands for. The interval to graph it on, which happens to be the period of the sine wave. Half of 2 pi pi, pi over 2, and then the 3 pi over 2. Now I got to stay between these tiny little lines, and it's a sine wave, which starts at 0, 0, goes up to 1 quarter at pi over 2. So that's pi over 2, 1 fourth. Then it goes back to Zero. I'll wait a minute and write that on there. Well, I can't write it. Pi zero. And then it goes down to the negative one quarter and back to zero. Oops, I went too high. And then this point's at three pi over two, negative one fourth. My comma went bye bye. And the last point, 2 pi 0. Fingers going numb. <laughs> All right, so far so good. What's this? I think next might be a little summary. Oh, nope. Got, oh, example four. Now this isn't an A value. The A value is 1. So the amplitude is 1. Okay. This number right here is going to change the graph's period. So to get the new period, you take the old period and divide by B. So the new period for this one, instead of 2 pi, it's going to be 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. Okay, now, 
if period is pi and it's telling us to graph from 0 to 2 pi, how many cycles will we be graphing? Yep, two of them. Okay, so let's mark off 2 pi way at the end here. And let's estimate halfway and mark that off as pi. Okay, now I got to teach you how to label these things. So if the pi is right there in the middle there, that's going to be one cycle from here to here. And the way we got the cycle or the spot broken down for the key points to plot <coughs> was by cutting it in half. So I'm going to cut this new cycle or new period in half. So this middle spot would be pi over 2. And then I got to cut those in half. So if I cut half of pi over 2, what's that? Pi over 4. Okay. Now my x scale is no longer pi over 2. It's changed to pi over 4. The x scale, as you go, how it's labeled by pi over 4, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. Halfway between pi over 2 and pi will be... 3 pi over 4. Okay, now the amplitude was 1, so we're just going up to 1. I don't care if you want to go ahead and put it up here. Just estimate about the same distance below the 0 to get your negative 1. It's a sine wave, so it's going to start at 0, 0. Then it's going to go up to its max. Pi, at pi over 4, it will be at 1. So that's the point, pi over 4, 1. This first point was 0, 0. Then it's going to come to pi over 2 at 0. Then after that, it'll go down to negative 1 when you get to 3 pi over 4 and back to 0 at pi. So I've got one cycle of the sine from 0 to pi. So what do you think we need to do now? Well, I'm going to finish labeling my points first because these are the key ones I need. 0, 0, pi over 4, 1, pi over 2, 0, pi, 3 pi over 4, negative 1, and pi 0. <clears throat> But I got to keep going, and I need to go one more cycle. So I'm going to split this section up from pi to 2 pi. I'm going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to cut those in half. I think that's the easiest way to estimate where things go, eyeballing it. Now I need to practice labeling it. Here we go. 0, we had 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4 is pi. Next one's 5 pi over 4. The one after that would be 6 pi over 4, and I wrote it way down here because I got to reduce that. 3 pi over 2. And the next one would be 7 pi over 4. All right? Now I'm going to extend my graph. So it's going to come back up, down, uh, well, to the middle, and then down to negative 1, and then back to 0. And you don't have to label all these points. Do a very nice job there. Okay, curve and back up. You just need the first 5. in. Uh, you need 5 within one cycle. So, no, it will not be okay to just label, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all those. That won't cut it. you got to do five key points within one cycle. Okay, so I, you see, I can see that you can name them all properly. Yeah, I've had people try that, where they graph more than one cycle, and then they just do the easy ones. And whatever. Just five within a cycle. Okay, now we got, ooh, an ickier one. Why is this ickier? Well, just because it's got three for that number right there, and that means the period's going to be 2 pi over 
three. <laughs> now, how many cycles would that be from zero to two pi then? Three of them. <laughs> yeah. You cut it in thirds, right? It's a little bit awkward to label this one because of that. All right, then the amplitude, though, is still one. All right, so it's going to go one up, zero, down one. Okay, and now I've got to think, all right, so I got to go out to 2 pi because it says graph it from 0 to 2 pi. And I can't cut that in half because I don't have just, it's not going to work. I want to cut it into thirds. All right, that's a little bit trickier. So estimate that's looking like three equalish pieces. Not necessarily perfect, but you could use a ruler if you really wanted to get picky about it. I'll just make my marks. Okay, so I'm I'm using this. All right, so I'm going to put 2 pi over 3 at the first mark. All right, because I'm going to have a whole wave right in here. It's going to do this in here. So I got to label stuff, though. So let's see. What would be half of 2 pi over 3? Well, what's half of 2 of anything? One of them. So it's pi over 3. What's half of pi over 3? Yep, pi over 6. So what's your scale? Pi over 6. It's the smallest one you get to. Okay, so the x scale is pi over 6, so I'm going to start counting. 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, halfway between here, 3 pi over 6, and that reduces to pi, and pi over 2. Okay. All right, now I get one, coast, um, one sine wave in that interval. So I'm going to go to 0, 0, because I always know the sine starts at 0, 0. Then it goes up to its max, which is the amplitude of 1. Then it comes back to 0. Then it goes down to negative 1, then back to 0. So go ahead and get one cycle completed. Okay, now we're going to squeeze in those labels. We got 0, 0. Pi over 6, 1 is the second point. Pi over 3, 0 is the third point. I didn't do this real pretty, but pi over 2, negative 1 is the fourth. I don't know where to write this one, but I'm going to be going up on the next cycle. So I think I'll, well, I'm just going to write an arrow. 2 pi over 3, 0. Because I can't. I just, I know what's going to happen. You probably do too, because we're going to keep writing stuff. So I got to go for another whole section right here. All right, so from here to here, I got to cut that in half and then cut it in half again. Each of those in half. All right, so at 2 pi over 3, I went to this mark, I cut that in half, and then I cut the section in half. So I was at Let's see, 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Then I get to 6 pi over 6, which is pi. And then 7 pi over 6. Okay, I hope you're kind of understanding why I taught the unit circle by counting like this. Right, that's part of it, is how you get it labeled, etc. <laughs> And the next one would be 8 pi over 6. I just jotted it down here so you know we can just reduce that to 4 pi over 3. Okay, I'm going to continue one cycle. So I was at 0. I'm going to be coming up now to 1, back to 0, down to negative 1, back to 0. So I get to draw another cycle. I should have made it more humpy. All right, that's not the best one I ever drew, but it'll do. You don't have to label these points. We're just going to extend it. Now, I just want you to know how to label your x-axis. All right, so we have one more cycle to do. 
this is the worst one that we have, are doing today. So I'm going to cut from 4 pi over 3. Notice that's 2 pi over 3, and then the next 2 pi over 3 was 4 pi over 3. This end one, 6 pi over 3 is 2 pi. Okay, so we've done it right. Cut this in half and then those in half. Okay, now I was at, what was I at? 1 pi over 6, 2 pi, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pi over 6. So the next one would be 9 pi over 6, and that reduces to 3 pi over 2. Then comes 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. And then 11 pi over 6. Notice these are all things on the unit circle. All right. Let's extend that graph. Uh, we're going back up to 1, then down to 0, down to negative 1, and back to 0. Whoa. Absolutely. Kidding? Oh, they're going to be worse than this. Well, we're going to shift them too. Okay, this is this is the this is yeah. That, I mean, this is not a really a bad that bad a one. I mean, it's one of those Ikir wants to label, but we're gonna yeah, we're gonna be sliding them pi over two units left or right maybe or pi over four. Or, yeah. It's not that bad. Usually this is actually one of the better things over this semester. After you've done it enough, you gotta practice, guys. This is this, that was tedious. Am I gonna make you do like five cycles of this stuff? No. Most like like on your quiz, generally you're just gonna do one full cycle. But you're gonna have to show it like shifted or stretched. And there's just like and also we're gonna move them up and down. So, like, this whole graph might move up here. That's all. Yeah, this was a tiny, this one was tiny. So, we'll try not to make them too horrible. But, I mean, if you notice, like, the worksheet that's 20, um, if you look over at worksheet 24, we've got them all, they're all gridded already for you. You just got to be able to label them. And, yes, some of the writing is tiny. Um, I don't, you know, I, I got it that this one was kind of squished, but. It was the only one that was icky, I thought. Well, anyway, I'm not going to, I can't complain about it. All right. Anyway, here's the deal. Um, if B is a positive number, the graphs of Y equals A sine DX and Y equals A cosine BX will have. Amplitude will be the absolute value of A because guess what we'll also be doing with these graphs? What happens if A is negative? Instead of going like this, is going to go like, no, I mean, it's just going to flip over. That's not that bad, right? Okay, so that can happen. Um, and then I haven't shown you phase shifting yet, which is going to be the next time we meet. Um, vertical center line changes and phase shifting. That's the other two things that can happen. So there's actually four different transformations you can do to a graph. You can stretch it vertically. You can compress or expand the the, the the period, and you can shift the center line where the x-axis is no longer the middle of the graph. You can move it up or down, and you can slide it right or left. And we'll learn how to write equations for them. And I really think you'll find it. I'll teach you how to do it where it's the easiest possible way. All right, period is going to be 2 pi divided by, and remember, this is just sine and cosine, guys. I'm not going to make you be doing stretching, translating, and sliding, and everything else with your tangents and your cotangents, and your C, you might have to stretch a secant or a cosecant. That's about it, where the amplitude changes. All right. So the main ones that you're going to have to do all this chunk to are sine and cosine. All right. You can do more shifting and messing around with them in pre-calculus. Yeah, they'll be harder in pre-calc. All right, graph one complete, so not that much, though. Complete cycle. Oh, this one's kind of cool because now the V is one half. So the period's going to be two pi divided by a half. Well, what do you do when you divide by a fraction? Yeah, two pi times two. So the period is four pi. 
it says graph one complete cycle. So I'm going to go out to four pi. All right, I'm going to cut four pi in half. If we can't do that, we're in big, big trouble. All right, then half of two pi, pi in our x scale is pi. You don't have to write that down. I just wrote it down because there's some places where it says it. So one pi, two pi, halfway, three pi. All right, the amplitude of this graph, there is a value of one understood to be in front of the code sign, so the amp is one. All right, the cosine starts up high, so we're going to put a one and a negative one low. If you like to do your little dashed lines to keep within there, you could use a ruler and make them nice and straight. If you felt like it, I'll even provide rulers if you end up wanting to do so. And this is a cosine, so do I start high or low? High. Yep. Started your max. Okay, that's your max value. One. Then you come to zero. Then you go down to the min. Then you come to the midline. Then you go to the high. They're all going to follow this pattern even if I move the midline. Okay. Okay, I've got my curve sketched, and now I'm going to go 0, 1 is my first point, pi 0 is my second, 2 pi negative 1 is my third, 3 pi 0, and the last one, 4 pi 1. Now, is that that bad? No, hope not. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was example, oh, remember six. Oh, that's on the back of 23. I don't even know where I was. Seven, graph one complete cycle of each of the following equations then extend the graph to cover the given interval. <coughs> <clears throat> All right, first, it has an amplitude of 3. The period is 2 pi because it's a sine, but it's divided by the B value, which is 2. Remember, this is your A, this is your B. 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. The interval it says we want to graph over is negative pi to positive 2 pi. So that means we're going to do three cycles. Okay. I'll show you left pi. That would be where negative pi is. I'm just going to mark off 0. Oh, and the graph's going to start there because it's a sine wave. It goes, we're supposed to go out to 2 pi. So let's go and kind of estimate how long this was. 1 pi. So maybe about here is positive pi, or maybe a little further to the right. Got positive pi. And then 2 pi at the end, towards the end. I like separated pretty evenly. Not too bad. All right, then um, let's go ahead and do one cycle here. Cut that in half. That'd be pi over 2. This would be pi over 4, half of pi over 2. So my x scale is pi over 4. 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4 between there, 3 pi over 4. We're going to have one sine wave, and it goes up to an amplitude of 3. We're down to 3, negative 3. Starting at 0, 0, then go up to 3 at pi over 4, back to 0. Just follow your pattern now for the sine wave. Okay, it kind of came back. I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. All right, so I've got one cycle. So I'm going to label those points now, 0, 0, pi over 4, 3. Pi over 2, 0, 3 pi over 4, negative 3, and pi 0.
now that I've got that done, all I'm going to do is chop up these other sections into fourths and extend the graph. Okay, so I can just go ahead and start plotting, and then I'll go ahead and label those in just a sec. All right, so I know my X scale was pi over 4, so I can go 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4 is going to reduce to 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4. And then I just have to go backwards a cycle. So I, those are just the same labels as going positive direction, except they're negative. So negative pi over 4, then negative pi over 2, then negative 3 pi over 4. Now, if you want to start, um, it depends on how you feel more comfortable. If you want to start at the negative pi is 0 and then know what your pattern is like. Or you can try going backwards but it should be like this. All right, I made a little bit of a mess. Didn't hit that very well. All right, good enough. Got one more, Scott. You take the period and mark, cut it in fourths. Pi over four would be the scale because pi has to get cut into four pieces. It's one way to look at it. The way I got the scale was I took pi and I cut it in half, then I cut that in half, and that's what my scale ends up being. It's the first value after zero. Okay, I'll tell you it again on the next one. Okay, so this one, we've got um, amplitude is 4. Period would be 2 pi divided by 1 half, which is 2 pi times 2, or 4 pi. Okay, so I had, it says to go from negative 4 pi to positive 4 pi, so we just have to go a cycle in the positive direction and one in the negative direction. Now, here's how I get the scale. The period is 4 pi. I cut 4 pi in half. That's 2 pi. I cut 2 pi in half. That's pi. That's my scale. Got. You are? Okay. So my, my scale is pi because that's half of half. All right. Then I go 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. Okay. And then back this way. All right, so let's do one cycle. This is a cosine, and it's got an amp of 4. So it's actually all the way up to 4 and all the way down to negative 4. So it starts up high, then it goes to the midline, then all the way to the bottom, back, and up. So it'd be like this. Oh, I missed. Oh, sorry, I'm being a little... Sorry, guys. And then back it up. All right, your assignment is 24 and 5. 25. And I'll help with some that you have trouble with next time I see you. Buck testing tomorrow. Don't stress out.
Okay. So, well, I'm thinking. What are you Sure. Yes, yes. Well, you'll, you'll, you'll try and that too get does better. You gotta, you know, give it a try. Good luck. Oh. <sighs>